asan. Asan is the third limb of Hashtang. And asan essentially represents taking a posture, taking a posture. And if you go to a yoga class, that's the most identifiable, identifiable part of Ashtang that you go through different postures, you do the warrior poses, you do the triangle poses, you do all these poses uh, and so you see asan in action in a yoga studio. It's the third limb of Ashtang. Asan represents a very important part of yoga. In fact, as I said, the most visible part of yoga is asans. You take postures. So why do we do asans in yoga? In an asana, you take on a posture which may place a lot of stress on you. You hold the posture in as still a physical uh, posture as possible. So your mind is still, your body is still, you're not moving. You're just nourishing yourself with your breath and you're looking inwards, understanding yourself as you take on the posture. So what is the purpose of the asana? Asana has three important purposes. The first one is it brings your imagination and reality into harmony. So one of the purposes of asana is, can I just do something in my mind or can I also do it in reality? So often we have thoughts, I can do this, I can do that, I'm able to do this. In your fantasy you have these thoughts and maybe you can do it, maybe you cannot do it. So one of the roles of the asana is, it brings harmony into what I think I can do and what I can do. So it exposes it exposes your strength, it exposes also your limitations. So if you take a posture and you recognize, oh, I can't go that deep in the posture, maybe I need some work on these muscles. So it exposes some of our weaknesses. So that is one purpose of asan, to just tell us about ourselves. So it diagnoses us in a realistic way. Now the asans have to be chosen. So all five elements of wellness are challenged. So physically, all five elements of wellness are challenged, which means strength, stamina, flexibility, sense of balance, and finally, the ability to let go, ability to release. And a properly designed sequence of asanas should include all five elements, and all five elements should be challenged. Now, when we talk about asanas in a yoga class, we talk about physical postures. But one has to recognize that asan, which means stress, essentially placing ourselves in different stressful situations, can apply to physical, our physical well-being, our mental well-being. So a math, math problem, for example, is an asana, a student who is studying mathematics. For the student, the asana is the math problem, a difficult math problem, and solving the difficult math problem, that's an asana for a student. Or understanding or developing vocabulary, ability to memorize poetry, all of those are asanas for the mind. Asans for the social life are interactions with people. How do we interact with people? Do we get upset? If people say something, do we get frightened, upset, cynical, angry? Or do we deal with it calmly? And spiritual asans, which means how do we interact? How do we have love in our heart? Do we say things but not able to? Uh, if you say we are very loving, but in fact we are not. So asan includes all of our dimensions. Another purpose of the asan is to extend the limits up to which our body can handle things. So our body can take stress up to a certain point, which is a threshold point, and beyond that our body breaks down. And our body reacts to the stress with anger, cynicism. Purpose of the asana is also to extend those limits. So one day if you do a posture like a warrior pose, you may find I can do it for maybe two or three breaths and you can slowly work and extend that limit and you can hold it for two or three minutes. So the purpose of the asana is also to extend our limits, so extend our boundaries of how far we can do things, how much we can do things and handle things with calmness. Because when we take an asana, the purpose is to keep the mind calm. Observe yourselves, keep your mind calm. So you become a participant, you're doing the asana, but also an observer. You're observing yourself. How am I reacting to this posture? How am I reacting to this asana? So another purpose of asana is to extend those limits. In addition, another purpose of the asana is to strengthen our entire dimension, strengthen all our muscles, bring harmony. And 
not only have strong arms, strong chest muscles, work on small tiny muscles, tiny parts. So bring harmony in our full dimension, in full uh, ability to think. So very often we do asanas which involve just lifting our toes up, spreading our fingers very wide and then wider, pulling our palms in. So movements or postures that require complete harmony in our body and that distinguishes yoga. A properly combined sequence of postures works on every muscle group, our hearts, our lungs, our ligaments, all our tendons, from our toes, through our calves, thighs. So another purpose of the asanas, doing sequence of asanas is to bring total harmony in our body. And of course, one has to understand that the third limb, asana, is not just for our physical body. Our physical postures will not enlighten us, will not make us a better person. Asanas that are taken in the social domain, where you are interacting with people, how do I react then? In isolation, we may all be great people. But when you interact with people, how do I react? Do I get upset? Do I get angry at the other person? Can I deal with people calmly? Can I have love for other people? So enlightenment comes not from just physical postures. You cannot become a true warrior by just doing warrior poses. You become a true warrior by interacting with people, by helping others, by participating in life, also letting people help you. That is also part of being uh, a warrior. So asanas for the body, for the mind, for the spirit, for the social interactions, that's the third limb of Ashtang, Asana.